Hey everyone, welcome back to another video in React Native. So in this video, we'll be implementing the sign in with phone number functionality in React Native using the Expo framework. So basically, we'll be making use of Twilio as well as Superbase for implementing this one. So let's get started. If you find this interesting, please do the like button and do subscribe for more such content. So initially, I've just created a basic Expo project and I have set up a few things that is the navigation part. I'll be showing you that. So basically, I'll be sharing the entire code base, so not to worry. I've created a screens folder, a constants folder, as well as a config folder where we have the superbase client.ts, okay? And we have some colors that we're going to use. And inside of the navigation folder, we have home stack as well as stack navigator. Within the home stack, we basically have the home screen where basically nothing is present, just an empty text, okay? So apart from that, inside of your stack navigator, we have two things that is your phone number screen that is the screen which is being shown as well as the OTP screen where you would enter the OTP okay I'll be sharing the design for the entire thing you can just you know make use of that so now let's get started with the integration part okay so make sure you create a project inside of Superbase and you need to have two things that is your URL that is uh, what we call it as Superbase URL as well as the Superbase and on key. So once you create your project, it would be available there itself. You can make note of that and you can enter that into your Superbase client.ts. So once I share the code, you should be able to see where exactly to enter these two details. I'll be, you know, just passing an empty string while I push the code. You can enter in your credentials over there. So let's head over to Chrome and just, you know, search for Twilio. And press on the first link this is the first website press on that and try to create a profile if you do not have one so once you create a profile it would bring back you to this particular account dashboard and currently I've just pressed on verify and I am on the try it out section okay so here we need access to basically three things I guess one is your auth token one is your SID as well as one is your account SID again so all these three things i'll tell you where exactly to get okay first things first let's press on your develop press on verify because we need to verify the phone number also make sure that we are on the trial version of this so basically if you want to upgrade you can upgrade that as well so one thing in the trial version we cannot do is we cannot send otp to any different phone number okay so the first thing that you're going to do is create an account and then verify the phone number you want to send the otp to so let's say you want to build a project just for testing purposes that is with your own kind of phone number that is to implement the sign in with phone number functionality make sure to come to Twilio press on the account and then user settings so once you go to this particular user settings so as you can see my phone number is basically verified okay so it's asking for an OTP so once you verify that you should be able to access this page so sometimes just for double confirmation, it is going to ask you OTP a couple of times. So there you go. This is my email address, my user SID, as well as your 2FA. That is this, this is my number, not my personal number, obviously. So this is a verified number. So make sure you verify your number over here. Okay. And make sure to note your user SID. The next step is you're going to come back over here. So since we're on the trial version, so each time you send a OTP automatically, this credits is going to come down. They would give you a free credits of $15. So once that is done, you need to upgrade. So once you upgrade, you can send the OTP to any kind of phone number. Okay. So that's it. Let's come to verify over here and then overview. So here you would get two things, I guess. So as you can see, I've sent the OTP 13 times to my number because I'm working on a project. So basically this is all of your details. This is your service society. Even that is required. Press on your, uh, I guess, uh, try it out. Okay. Scroll down. And this is your account SID. Make sure you note this down. And this is your auth token. Make sure you note this down as well. Okay. Apart from that, you need one more thing. That is basically if you would check out your authentication in Superbase. Because we are trying to implement this with Superbase. So that we could store the user in the backend as well. Okay. So basically once you come into Superbase. Make sure you press on authentication. And then sign in and providers. Sign in or providers. Make sure you enable phone. So once you enable phone. Press on this. Press the SMS provider as Twilio verify. This is your account SID. Note that down from Twilio. This is your auth token. Note that down as well from these details. Furthermore, the next one is your 
verify service SID. So for that, let's you can basically press on start building. I'm going to continue my last tutorial. So for you guys, it will be start the tutorial. Okay. So here you can directly enter your phone number and then you can press on send test. Okay. So once that is done, you should be able to get the OTP to that particular phone. And over here in the log itself, you should be able to see your verify SID. I think that's the name. Yeah. Verify service SID. So make sure you add all of these over here. Okay. That's pretty much it in the backend part. We can actually start implementing this. So within your phone number screen, that is over here. You can create basically a on press function. There is, let's say handle send OTP. I'm going to say const handle send OTP. It's going to be equal to async function. And over here, I'm going to say if not a phone number or our phone number dot length is, you know, less than 10. Then in this case, I'm just going to say alert dot alert error. And then please enter a valid 10 digit number. And I'm just going to say return from the function just like this. So yeah, apart from that, we are going to say set loading to be of true. Furthermore, we are going to say const full number is going to be equals to, I'm going to make this a back text, enter your country code. I'm going to say plus nine one for my country code and then your phone number. Okay. So here you can implement your try as well as catch block. So initially, you know, catch of error here. I'm going to say console.log error with that particular error message within the try block. We are basically going to, you know, get in the error. I'm going to say const error is going to be equals to await superbase dot auth dot sign in with OTP. This in turn is going to take in two things, your phone that is going to be full number. Apart from that, it's going to take in your options, which in turn is going to take in your channel that is going to be your SMS. Okay. You can basically try to log the error as well. I'm going to say console.log error with that particular error message. So I'm going to say if there is any kind of error, then directly try to alert the user. So I'm going to say alert dot alert error with that particular error message. So it's going to be equals to error dot message. And I'm going to say set loading to be of false, then return. Okay, so once that is done, you can actually send one more alert message that is displaying the user that the OTP has been successfully sent to the phone. So I'm going to say alert success OTP sent successfully format once that's it. Then you can actually navigate to the next screen. I'm going to say navigation dot navigate to the name of the screen. That's going to be OTP. And you can basically send the phone number because it's required to verify over there. I'm going to say full phone number or full number. That's pretty much it. Let's give the on press over here for the reservable capacity. I'm going to say on press. It's going to be equals to handle. Send OTP. Okay. Save the file. So now the next step is we're going to also implement the verification part over here. So let's head over to the OTP screen dot TSX. Okay. So for the uh, touchable opacity, which says verify, that is this one. I'm going to say on press, it's going to be equals to handle verify OTP. Okay. I think I've already added the code. Let's check that. Okay. It's already added. So basically the design is already set up for this where we have six, you know, input boxes to enter the OTP. So here, uh, that is basically inside of your handle verify OTP. First of all, we're going to, you know, join all of the OTPs because initially it is an empty string. Okay. With six boxes. So once you join, you're going to check if at all the length is equals equals to six. If it's not equal, then we're going to directly return from the function and we're going to say set loading to be of true. So again, we're going to make it a similar method that is getting the error as well as the data. 
So you're going to say await superbase dot auth dot verify OTP. Use that method. This is going to take in three things. That is your phone, your token, as well as the type. That's going to be of SMS. So once that is done, you can get in your user details. And once if the user is present, I'm going to say await superbase dot auth dot refresh session. And furthermore, if you're going to get the session with the help of this one, you can actually log the session over here. Okay. Once that is done, we're going to actually try to get the error. We're going to say await superbase dot from users dot absurd. So here basically we are trying to push the details into the users table. So make sure you have a users table in the backend. Okay. This is to just store the users data in the backend part. And if there is any error while storing that, just show the error. Else, I'm going to say success ODP verified successfully welcome. Okay. This is for the recent part. You can check that as well. I'll be sending the code for this. You can go through it. So one final step is before checking this out within the app.tsx, we are going to make use of the session part so that we could navigate the user to the next screen. So for that, we're going to make use of a variable. I'm going to say const is authenticated comma set is authenticated is going to be equals to use state. This is going to be basically a Boolean type. Initially null, just like this. Okay. So furthermore, I'm going to make this of a use effect that's going to run on the initial render. So here within the use effect, we're going to basically debug the async storage. I'm going to say const debug async storage. This is just to check if at all there is any session already present. It's going to have async function. Here I'm going to say try as well as your catch block. So initially catch of error. Here I'm going to say console.log error uh, with that particular error message. Within the try block, here I'm going to say const keys is going to be equals to await. Make sure you install both async storage as well as superbase. Async storage dot get all keys. I'm going to say const your session key is going to be equals to make it to the find method in JavaScript. And for every key, if your key dot includes SP, that's how we track the key from superbase and and key dot includes auth token. Okay. Here I'm going to check if your session key is present, then I'm going to say const session data is going to be equals to await async storage dot your get item of your session key. Okay, so here I'm going to log it. I'm going to say console.log superbase session data in async storage. Okay, so here I'm going to use the session data. Else, if it is not present, I'm just going to log no session found. Okay, so I'm going to say console.log no superbase session found in async storage. That's pretty much it for now. And furthermore, after this, you're going to call the function at the bottom most part. Okay. So yeah, we're going to write some more code within the user effect itself. That is to check the initial session on the app startup. That is once the app loads, I'm going to say const check session is going to be equals to async function again. So basically over here, initialize your try and then your catch block. So initially catch of error and then I'm going to say console.log error checking session with that particular error message within your try block. I'm going to say await first of all call the function that is debug async storage and I'm going to say const data which in turn is going to give you the session is going to be equals to await import superbase dot auth dot your get session. 
so this would give you the session so i'm going to say console.log initial session is going to be equals to session if this is present i'm going to say user is authenticated else i'm going to say no session is found and i'm going to say set is authenticated to be of not not of session okay that's pretty much it and furthermore after your catch block i'm going to say set is authenticated to be of false format and here we're going to call the check session function over here so check session and finally we're going to listen for the auth state changes that is by making use of the on auth state change method so here i'm going to say cons data get in the auth listener and we're going to make so base dot auth dot on auth state changed so here whether or not if at all the user is logged in or logged out we're going to set the state and we're going to call the debug async storage so this is basically the cleanup that is going to happen once the component is going to unmount okay that is auth listener dot subscription dot unsubscribe here let's write the condition that is if is authenticated is true then show your home stack else show your stack navigator itself so i'm going to add one more condition over here that is if is authenticated is equals equals to null then i'm just going to say loading over here let's try to save the file so there you go no super base session found in async storage auth state change that is any event is going to be initial session and session is basically considered to be null which is true initial session is no session is found and no super base session is found in async storage okay so let's try to implement this i'm going to enter my phone number over here i'm going to press on continue there you go it is sending okay so yeah we did get the otp let me just check my phone over here yeah i did get the otp let me just enter that so i'm going to say seven eight seven seven zero seven and then i'm going to press on verify it's verifying and boom there you go successfully we are navigated to the home screen okay so there you go session after otp verification session is set and this is basically all of your details that is being passed down once your auth status changed as you can see event is token refreshed this is your session we do have a session now and this is your access token and basically it is having all of the values that is expires at expires in your refresh token as well what is the token type and all these other details okay and by default as you can see the session is set as of now and we are navigated to the home screen so as you can see that's how it's going to work so this is how simple it is to verify your phone number so if you want to verify some other different phone number just try to make sure to upgrade you should be able to send otp to that phone number as well so now if you actually try to reload over here you should be able to you know see a uh, 14 uh, times we have verified because previously it was 13 so let's try to come to try it out or i guess overview So there you go 14 and this is done just now as you can see approved okay so there you go this part is done so that's how we implement the sign in with phone number using otp in react native so if you found this interesting please do the like button and do subscribe for more such content so let's see the next video and then thank you for watching